Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the shows and happy Tuesday. And speaking of Jews, no, it's Jews Day. And speaking of Jews, I'm joined by a very proud one. Hello, Jacqueline Foley. Thank you so much for joining the show today. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here per choosual. Oh, okay. <laughs> not the pun. Not the pun. Not the slut strands, Jackie. You look like a big slut today. I feel uncomfortable, not because of being slutty. I feel uncomfortable. I feel like they don't look right and they're bothering me. I'm actually going to put them behind my ears if you could bear with me. Oh, so she, we're kind of going from a slutty podcast to a more traditional one. Jackie's putting her slut strands away. Yeah. She's taking back you know her life of sin and she's moving forward in christ i love that no it was just too in my face i can't live like that i need a clean workspace to do my thing no distractions i'ma do my thing bang, bang. that was such a crazy song why that album was actually extremely good yeah what is the song that opens the movie train wreck i know it's from the bangers album yes is it not do my thing? No, is it? No, I'm gonna. I need to look at the name of the songs. I'll know it when I see it. It was such a perfect random like. Per- whoever did the soundtrack like knew what the fuck they were doing. You know, it's true. I think you're right. I think it was do my thing. I think it, it was. Yes, it was confirmed. Okay. Great, great little trivia for the morning. Speaking of pop culture, you're looking like Kate Middleton today in your sweater. I am looking like Kate Middleton today with my sweater. And don't forget my gorgeous, luscious locks. Of course, the locks. But the you sweater is so, as they say, Kate Middleton coded. coded. Wait, something we didn't even really talk about. It's like a really sad side effect for anyone of chemotherapy is losing your hair. And Kate is really like known for her hair. It's like famous, her famous blowout. That If that is a reality, that's so sad, you know? Yeah. Just something I wanted to mention. Thank you for mentioning that. Thanks for making the show sad. Sorry. <laughs> Back to me looking like Kate Middleton. Yeah. Uh, it's Kate Middleton via Amazon. It's Kate Middleton if you ordered her through Wish, you know? It's giving Timu Kate Middleton. It's Fate Fiddleton. It's Fate Fiddleton, but it doesn't mean it's not cute. No, I, I, you're the one who was denigrating it. Oh, yeah, that's my thing. Oh, you have to compliment me? I have to self-sabotage. Say something nice about me. I just did that you look like Kate Middleton. Say no, no, but like, else. yeah, like just compliment something about me. Oh, actually, well, having a hard time. Okay. <laughs> like, I feel like I captured all the, like, okay, your hair looks so wonderful. Thanks, it's a wig. Like, I always have to sort of insult myself you whilst accepting You can't accept a compliment. It. I can't. No, and it's like, okay, someone says, I love your shirt. I'll literally be like, it was a dollar. Yeah. So? Yeah. What's the right thing to say? I need to learn to, to say, stop doing that. Just thank you. Oh my God, thank you so much. I love your sweatshirt too. No, no, no. You don't have to say another. You don't also have to deflect. Oh, wait. Are you wearing my sweatshirt? I am wearing your sweatshirt. It was in my you closet. Dirty remember? little liar. Because remember, you left it in my closet and I said, this belongs to you. Yeah, and you did. You were like, okay. Then you never took it. Well, enjoy. But here's the thing about accepting a compliment I feel like even what you just said, you're still deflecting by giving someone a compliment back. Like, just sit with it, accept the compliment. No, and I had to immediately change the subject, like back to your sweatshirt. Yeah. Like, let's try one more time. And this is like an exposure therapy, very Huberman of us. Tell me you like something about it. I me. like your sweater. Thank you so much. But about, I like it too, you know? Thank you so much. It's really comfortable. Yeah. Okay, that was good. Yeah. I think that's um, what you're supposed to do. So today's show, I'm so excited for. I think you and I both really did our research on today's episode because it's almost like this happens to us all the time where somebody who, like, is very popular in culture, but we don't really, like, know much about them. But the second we start talking about them, there's an article being written about them. It's almost like we're kind of, like, radioactive in that sense. But that happened yesterday. Huberman, who's kind of been, like, a major topic of conversation here at The Toast. We've been implementing a lot of his wellness and self-help. <laughs> Literally not at all. We take a sip of water and say Huberman sent us. I don't know. I took Romeo out today and right when I woke up and I got my vitamin D and I'm feeling Huberman-esque. Right, but it's like you still had to take your dog out. Yeah, no, no, no. But we've just been talking about him a lot recently and this sort of, uh, I don't even know what to call it. It was a cover story in New York Magazine. Hit it piece. was Yeah, but it was... Um, like moronic. Expose. Yeah, sure. Expose on Huberman in the New York Magazine. Jackie and I both read it. Everyone's talking about it. And I cannot wait 
to dive in. I screenshotted some of my favorite parts because they were <laughs> so dumb. Um, and I just like, I want everyone to know, and I'm sure you all could have guessed this, hashtag I stand with Huberman. Yeah. I did need to read it just to like, make sure I still stand with Huberman because it's like yeah, sometimes Make I sure he it. wasn't accused of something like egregious. Yeah. Sometimes I see a hit piece and it's my reflex to want to defend the person just because yep. that's the way things go. And so often it's a mountain out of a molehill and people are just being crucified. But every now and then there are like legitimate accusations. So you don't want to right. just like blindly defend. Right. So I do need to like see the accusations prior to be able to speak on them and say comfortably, I stand with Huberman. And like, I wasn't even somebody who, like we talked about Huberman a lot. I swear, like I had no idea anything about, he was a real scientist. I didn't know, I didn't know he was Stanford, Stanford professor. I just know he's like a girly with a podcast that talks about wellness. Who doesn't? I thought it was seriously like, he was an influencer. I had no idea of his accolades. And I'm sure this wasn't the point of an of the article. I'm a Huber stan. Like, I find his whole thing very impressive. He's a fucking freak. But like, and I was thinking about this yesterday. I feel like it's really common for sort of mainstream media to do big hit pieces, never on someone who's like a media darling. It's always so, someone who's sort of like alternative, fringe. fringe, free thinker. And I don't know what the the point of these articles are. Is it to silence that person? Because I find more often than not, they become bigger than ever. Like this article, for me, like you, I had never even heard of Huberman. I never even felt compelled once in my life to listen to a podcast episode of his. I'm so not the target demo. But now, I don't know. I'm like, oh, he's a fucking freak. Yeah, now I'm like, wait, what but was he saying his, about coffee before you wake up? Is it but, And his wellness go tips listen. are so um, ubiquitous. Like they become ubiquitous. People just die for them. I'm intrigued. So I don't know what the point of these articles are, but I feel like they're having the adverse effect. I feel like it's mainstream media, media me, mainstream media's way of like, silencing someone who's kind of out there but like in someone turn, who, ha who has a, a platform and is maybe using it not in the way that they want to see them using it and so i find that it just has the opposite effect i think now people are so attuned to it that even obviously for us we're hardened so we read it like with a critical lens but even when i was seeing some of the reactions from this article like i think it is having the opposite effect for most people where it's like Oh, Huberman. Well, is it, mm. Yeah, right. That's just like the nature of life. Like you can't just cancel everyone. And so at first I think like if you got canceled like in the late 2010s, like it had a major, major impact. And ever since then, it's just sort of like a rite of passage for anyone with a platform. It doesn't really have the it's fallout that it passage. used to have. And honestly, if you haven't had even like a small scandal, you're kind of a nobody, seriously. Yeah, and... It's crazy what they even got of Huberman. They went so far deep into his personal life. Like, nobody. You know perfect. what it was reminding me of? What? I hope that we're on the same page. I'm going to say it in three, two, one. But you I'm not going to say it. No, but I want you to say it. I, I, I can't think that wide spanning. Tell me what it reminded you of. I'll tell you if I had that feeling. I'll be honest. It reminded me of the article about Gary. <laughs> No, the it bachelor. Did not. It did not remind me of that. Okay, that's that yeah, one was, exactly. was even more innocuous. But and if you want to dig so deep into someone, you will find like loser behavior. behavior about anyone. And then to make it like the grand sweeping thesis is like his private and his public. There's such a disparity. Can oh we wait, trust, I have. A, can we trust what he's saying? I'm glad you brought up the grand thesis because I literally screenshotted the last paragraph of the article. It was like the girl did all this dumb research and she like didn't know how to land the plane. Yeah, she didn't know how to be. So like, she made it about like female friendship. It was so stupid. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, you know what? Let's sidebar that because that is our first crazy story. Is that that's not even the biggest story of the day? Is the biggest story of the day the bridge? No. Okay, no. let's just talk about that really quick. Horrible. Like, woke oh up. Oh, my God. Sending so much love to our Baltimore toasters. Like, how scary. That, that video. was so scary. That video is so scary. They're still doing the search and rescue mission. There's still I feel six like people missing. That's seven. I feel like that's everyone's worst nightmare when they're going over a bridge. And it feels like this just sort of like far off thing that's never going to happen. But it's like this crazy thing we all think. And it's people's like actual worst nightmare coming to fruition. It is so scary. Mm -hmm. I don't know who to be angry at. Mm -hmm. Like what the fuck happened with the boat? And did he back into it? No, it, it was a front. I, to me in the video, it looked a little bit like I've a backing in. seen pictures of the wreck. It, like you could see aerial pictures from daytime now. You could see it was the front of the boat. And by the way, thank God it wasn't like 7 a.m. rush hour. It was dark out, so I think there could have been way more people on the bridge. But there was also construction workers. Like, oh my God. Horrible. Yeah. 
Well, I think we'll have answers soon as to what happened. But it appears as though like the power went out on the cargo ship. Mm -hmm. But then also, I guess I never really thought like there are cargo ships going under bridges that we drive on. I don't love that. I didn't know that. Right. I've never seen a cargo ship under like the 59th Street Bridge. Well, not the or the Manhattan Street One Bridge. Manhattan Bridge. Or like any of the Manhattan Bridges. Okay, the GW. that's just Manhattan. But the world needs to operate. Like ports, are, like ports and bodies of water need a bridge. I don't know. I just didn't know that. Am I the only one? I never thought about it. So wait, what was the big story you're teasing? P. Diddy. <gasps> oh, right, right, right. Yes, That's yes. a big story. It is a big story. And I'm, I was talking to you about this this morning. It's really hard not to keep falling into conspiracy theory traps about P. Diddy. There's so much misinformation on Twitter, like on all social media. I cannot figure out what is real and what is fake. Yeah. Because well, people are no, making jokes. Even, people are making I, I don't AI. Even want to see, say misinformation because it's just like theories. And I feel like whenever you talk about sex trafficking and then like a wider ring. Yeah. Epstein. It, can, it definitely is bigger than some of the facts that we know right now. But then people just start to like theorize and start pulling from a million different things. And not all of it is true. I would say most of it is probably not. But it's just like theories and it's like wait so what's true what's fact right now and what's just being theorized about right and it reminds it's reminding me a lot of Epstein where like so many celebrities names were in the Epstein docs and I would say half of them were completely um innocently in there they had no correlation to Epstein Epstein Island pedophilia and now it's like names are floating and I just saw a thing in page six about Prince Harry being in some of the documents yeah one he was mentioned once and we'll talk about it in the story okay just to sort of say what's being said I it it is mostly like nothing burger ish but I'm sure he's having a freaking. hard day I'm sure he's freaking. not a good week for Prince Harry no no so juicy stories for a Tuesday you know we're going up on a Tuesday yeah it's always the Tuesday you never see it coming it's almost like we've been choosing we didn't choose this Tuesday we didn't choose this life Jackie it choosed us that's true that is true okay let's get into it because there's a lot to discuss yeah yeah without further ado to do, 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 do about the chew to chew to chew oh I love that here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five stories that you need to know are brought to you by M by Maiden Form. Get a taste of M, a hot new collection of craveable intimates from Maiden Form, a brand with a whole lot of history. They've been around since the very first bras, and now they are bringing you a new kind of classic, the chicest basics you've ever seen. So M is a collection from Maiden Form, and Maiden Form is a brand with 100 years of innovation, category leadership. They basically wrote the book on bras, and M is their next chapter. You have to really feel it to believe it. It's really buttery soft fabrics. They feel way more expensive than they are. It is essentially great style that will not break the bank. Their designs are super on trend. They're made from stretchy, comfy fabrics, and they come in incredible colors. M by Made in Form can be worn as innerwear, as outerwear. You can style it to your taste. You can create looks that serve for all or for none to see. That's what great, what's great about Made in Form. The bra that I've been loving, like I think a girl who's not me like could wear it as a shirt. I wouldn't. But I think it's really cool that a lot of their styles can be used as, you know, clothing, but also as intimate. So whether you're going to be showing people or not, you're going to look sexy, you're going to feel comfortable, you're going to feel great. Um, you can visit madeinform.com and use our code, which is TOAST20. Do that at checkout and you will get 20% off your first purchase. That's madeinform.com, M-A-I-D-E-N-F-O-R-M.com. Use the code TOAST20, T-O-A-S-T-2-0. For 20% off your first order, find all different styles, different colors, different materials. You will love it and you won't regret it. Today's episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place and all on your terms. So whatever you might be starting a website for or you want to revamp your website for your side hustle, whether you work in e-commerce, um, I feel like starting a website can be really intimidating and Squarespace is just so easy and it's going to get you a website that's professional looking. It's going to look like you hired you know, a fancy company to do it and it was just you in Squarespace. You can sell custom merch. You can create an online store. You can showcase your asset library. So if you're a videographer, a graphic designer, any sort of artist who needs to showcase their, their work, like their portfolio on a website, Squarespace is a great place to do that. 
Of course, Squarespace is also really known for e-commerce websites. So whether you want to sell stuff, you want to start a business. Um, they also have blogging tools. They have powerful blogging tools that help you share stories, photos, videos, and updates. So get into your influencer era. They also now offer courses. They have the tools that you need to create and sell your own online course. Start with a professional layout that fits your brand, upload video lessons to teach techniques and skills, and tailor your course with the powerful Fluid Engine Editor. Create engaging content your audience will love and then simply add a paywall and set the price. You can charge a one-time fee, sell subscriptions, turn your creativity into action, into income with Squarespace courses. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash toast. Thank you, Claudia. Oh, before we dive in, I did have a brief update um, on the 5K. Okay. I think I'm going to, I think, I, I think I'm going to be able to swing it. Like I, I have to. What changed? Well, I was just sitting here thinking like, I literally have a running appointment today. I'm like, I did put in all this work. What's holding me back? First, it's Snitch's birthday. I did get approval from the one and only Snitch to miss it. She, honestly, I was hoping her, she would be a little bit more upset. She didn't seem that upset. She also, uh, I think, knows if I miss it, like I'll have to get her a birthday, better birthday present. So I think, you know, it's a win-win for everyone. Wow. So she was okay with it. Then I asked Ben if he would run it with me because I'm not running it alone. Of course. Um, he said yes. And I also invited Josh to run it with me. Did he answer me? Oh, he said, I'm obviously in. Bob. Mm, I'll sign us all side. up. Yeah, I mean, you ditched me. Like, we've been training for this. I could say you ditched me. Went over to the good guys. Didn't even bat an eyelash. I think we're going to have to call ourselves the good guys and dolls. After everything they've done to us. Why don't you just be happy that I'm not running this 5K alone like a loser? Okay? I never thought you were running it alone. I never was going to. So um, that'll be fun, no? Yeah. I was like kind of looking forward to not having to train anymore. <laughs> no, the training is fun. I feel like even if nothing came of it, like it was just a good thing that we were doing. And we got so much shtick. And I am, I'm going to do it. Like I'm signing up. I'm going to tell, you know, the peeps that I'm at. Like count me in. Plus two. Okay. I'm happy for you. Keep me posted. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get into the stories. First up, Diddy's LA and Miami homes were raided by the feds in connection with the sex trafficking investigation yesterday. So Sean Diddy Combs' homes in LA and Miami were raided by Homeland Security on Monday in possible connection with an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Federal law enforcement agents were seen arriving to the rapper's properties with guns drawn in the lavish Homeby Hills neighborhood of L.A. and in Miami, as seen in video obtained by Fox 11. In another video captured by TMZ, federal agents could be seen swarming his California property while multiple helicopters hovered from above. A few people were taken out in handcuffs, including um, one of his sons. The other people's names have Ooh. yet to be officially revealed, along with, um, at the time, Diddy's whereabouts were unknown, but he was spotted yesterday at an executive airport in Miami. There also was then rumors that like his jet, which, you know, as we were talking about recently in regards to Taylor Swift, that his jet can be tracked and they say he's fleeing the country, but there's no proof of that. Like, So there was, I think he has two planes. One of them landed in Miami yesterday with him and another one was flying like from LA to the Caribbean. Hmm. Which is definitely weird. Like what was on that plane? Documents, people, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I don't think he would leave the country while his son is in custody. Um, now, of course, what does this remind you of? I know you're going to say Jake Paul, but it doesn't. It reminds me of Jake Paul because we had aerial footage of, was it Homeland Security or like the feds? The FBI. The FBI raiding his house, guns, people coming out. And it was the craziest thing of all time. And the way nothing happened after that, like he basically got swatted as a prank. You know, they do that. What the hell was the sort of wrap up there? Nothing. I don't know today. I don't care because we're talking about this. And, no, but I'm just saying, and if there this are goes the way, connected to this from Cassie that we had spoken about a few weeks ago. Also, um, Kid Cuddy, uh, Lil. Ro I need to find his name. His name is like Rodney. Uh, he's um, the like the one leveling charges against Diddy. He had worked with oh. him and there's a lot of different charges really. So there is like, there are stories here and charges and 
there's, there's information more. here. It's all related to sex trafficking charges, like sexual harassment, the physical abuse that Cassie had detailed. And then this person, Rodney, he was a producer with Diddy, has like a whole trove of sordid tales. Yeah, and there have been like people in the last like month, there's been a lot of news coming out about Diddy and people have been like, 50 Cent has been posting about it nonstop on his Instagram. Like people in the industry sort of been like hinting at something major to come and like this big sort of, you know, uh, network of, you know, whatever. And it feels like we might be on the precipice of like what we thought was going to happen with Epstein. Remember like the mm. list, the list. And that never happened. Nobody's saying for their supper. He, you know, killed himself in prison or whatever. And she, oh my God. I'm sorry. I keep going on tangents. The craziest part of this movie that I saw. I'm sorry. I know I keep going back to it. The, okay. The movie that I saw over the weekend, which is about Nicholas Winton, the guy who saved over 600 Jewish lives. The Ghislaine Maxwell of it all. Her father, which we, who we all know, who is Ghislaine Maxwell. She's like this heiress. He's like kind of like a Rupert Murdoch, big media. Him and his wife were the ones who discovered Nicholas Winton and his scrapbook and made the story what it was I, when they said Robert Maxwell I was like Ben do you know who that is like he didn't appreciate it the Ghislaine Maxwell of it all totally random sorry no back to what I was saying that's Isn't nice. that interesting yeah like you know they said when Jeffrey Epstein the Epstein Island we were finally gonna find out who all the pedophiles in Hollywood were that never happened but it does sound like it feels also like this Diddy thing is gonna like crack open this big sort of ring of abuse. Yeah, you would hope we don't that know. it would, but I don't think that it will. I feel no. like if, if Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein could be tried and, and for Ghislaine convicted of sex trafficking and not one person, one client, it, it, how, Revealed. You can, how you can charge someone with that without actually like having the people who did it, then this, yeah. to me, this feels like a, even a smaller version of it. I don't think... It's going to go past Diddy. I really don't. But I do think I hope that, that Epstein it does. client list, I feel like... Is more protected Epstein, than this. It's like a political class. It's not famous people. It was like, I feel like the one person who really came out, we knew he was a pedophile too, actually. Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton. Like, literally, those aren't celebrities. Those are like former presidents, a prince. Those are people who actually are a protected class. I think they're like the almighty. When people talk about like, you know... They, like, it's those types of people, you know what yeah. I mean? Whereas I feel like if there's anyone connected to this sort of human trafficking abuse ring that I feel like is going to come out with Diddy, it's more so celebrities who are definitely, you know, privileged and, and you know, get special treatment, but not like a protected class completely. And I feel I, like often the law tries to make an example out of celebrities. Maybe, but I think that, like, Diddy and... Is, is on that level of like global elites where yes some of them are politicians or like dignitaries but there are a few really big name celebrities in there and I think I just I don't know if it didn't happen with Epstein and I the know. island the seizure yeah. of the island and the logs they have everything and the documentaries I don't know what more is going to happen here I feel like it's just going to be about Diddy and the work like what he did and the toxic work culture that he fostered I don't think it's going to go into like global sex trafficking ring scale I don't think this is the one damn I'm just like waiting for that anyone yeah, else everyone is okay everyone is like people have this really, isn't I, it and I feel like people have not dropped the torch on like Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein did not kill himself like what the hell is going on what happened what are the names like where are the convictions but like these are very powerful people no, it's true. And it's like, how do we know that Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton like went to the island and were pedophilic? And like, and why aren't they in Yeah, like, it's so weird. Now, the Epstein thing, like everybody, well, not everybody, like the commoners, we did not drop the ball. The government, whoever was in charge, the attorney general, whatever, dropped the ball. Yeah. Now, the plane going to the Caribbean is weird. It is weird. It's giving Grand Cayman, you know? Yeah, it's giving extradition. Extradition. So yeah, this, this is, is a clearly really a developing crazy story. story. It's yeah, it is a developing story, and TBD if it has more to do with this global sex ring. trafficking ring, or if it's more so about like Diddy's world that he's cultivated, right? With Cassie and Rodney, and just like a really, and if you read some of the 
allegations of like you know like sex uh, sexual yeah, abuse, like handcuffing but also like, and also se- human trafficking like forcing people right. to have sex with other people the other thing is like sometimes these charges can be confusing because you're right it's either like diddy's a freak and has this like weird past or it's like this ring of you know abusers um and sometimes like when you like take someone across state lines like that's considered trafficking yeah yeah. it's confusing what the charges actually mean no what to what degree because trafficking is trafficking and making someone do something against their will and holding them prisoner like that's human trafficking but it's like how big is it Right. When I think human trafficking, I think what we all think, which is like this sort of underground system. system. Yeah. Big network. Big network. So I don't know. But when I, you know, I feel like we all, especially if you're really into pop culture, like it's so easy to like end up down rabbit holes, blind items like over the years. And you really do feel like Hollywood is this ring of pedophiles. Like that's just kind yeah. of, it's so easy to, no. to get there. Yeah. And there's proof like there really is. And things like this, like really um, you're like the inner, you know, f- blind item girl in me is like, oh, this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dominoes are falling into place. And I never would have thought that like Diddy was at the helm of it. I don't know who I would have thought was. I have some ideas. Yeah, like I feel like from the <laughs> you can't from, say if you, because no, like, if you read the blinds, we like took, you would, we were there are that, people we were in that compliance meeting in 2017, yep. so like we can't say, but like there are some yep. big names that are just. Can you text along. me who you think it would be? Yeah, I feel like who I think is not who you're, who would be top of mind for you. I feel like yeah. he really gets away unscathed. I feel like, okay, let me see who Jackie's saying. But then there's, by the way. Okay, this is the name that I think of first. Oh my God, that's what I was going to say because we think of the same blind item, this terrible story, right? Okay, yes. But then here's another name that people always throw around, but he wasn't so much in the blind. So for me, I don't feel as connected to it, but people really think this is the one. Oh, yeah. (laughs) By the way, he's the one. You think? Hold on. Sorry that this is annoying, but we can't just like be slinging at names. No, and I would also love, is it oh, slander? Oh, really? She is? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is it slanderous to what? Like ask people to sound off in the comments, like who they think of. I don't I think like so. I think it's like not. Right? <laughs> I don't think it is. Okay, here's the thing. Sound like when you think of like this sort of like underground devil demonic, like when you, you go down that conspiracy, what celebrities do you like come to mind for you to be being at the helm of this ring of pedophilia and human trafficking? Yeah, yeah. And then there are some that are more known and not celebrities I'm though. Cracking like, up from our text. Like I feel like that's you know for the Like close I friends. think this one is is really the linchpin, what I just sent you, which I think What does linchpin mean? Like the Of course. The, if it's a pyramid, it's number top of the pyramid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like yeah. he Heard started it. it. Wait, it. <laughs> but look, wait, look, I wrote one more thing. <laughs> it always is. It always is. They always are. They always um, are. Sorry, that was annoying of us, but like for my own we health, need I needed to have that page. conversation. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we could have had the conversation and like cut it out, but why make more work for ourselves? Right. But also, so either like we've just read the same blinds. True. Which is true. Or we all just think the same things and we all yeah. have seen the same things. And like, is it possible? And I just have to ask this question, like the devil's advocate. Is it possible that like this sort of theory we all have about Hollywood and the elites, like that it's like fake? No, because then things like quiet on set come out and we feel like vindicated. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think not fake. I think there's a degree of truth through it, but it's just like to what degree is it true? Yeah. How... What percentage yeah. of Hollywood? Is it worse than we thought or is it smaller? Yeah. That's what I think. Okay. Okay. So, so we will keep you abreast. We're not going to let this story Yes, die. we will. Oh, and as it regards, uh, Prince Harry was mentioned in the filing um, um. because th- the producer, Lil Rod, Rodney Jones, said in court documents that guests were drawn to Diddy's alleged sex trafficking parties due to the rapper's, quote, access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, oh. artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. No okay, one else was named in that sentence. So, like, that's kind of rude. No, it's really unfortunate, but I get what he was trying to say. Like, these weren't just, that's kind of what we were saying before. These weren't just parties with, like, Hillary Duff, you know? It's another <laughs> level 
of yeah. beyond celebrity, even super A-list celebrities. It's up there with the powerful people. Yes, yes. And and it's people unfortunate, were attracted but to those parties for those reasons. It's unfortunate, but I do feel like it's a perfect example. I think it makes, you know, I understood what Rodney was saying, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sorry for Harry, but I think it was a necessary example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And by the way, if Harry was at a party, which by the way, being at a party is not a crime unless no. it's like the theme is human trafficking. Like, what are we dressing as? But right. No. Also, a lot of celebrities are at parties and that's where we get these pictures where it's like a nefarious actor yes. with a celebrity and of course, maybe the celebrity is nefarious as well, but maybe they're just not and they're just there being a dumb celebrity at a party. That's why um, all those pictures, like right at the height of Epstein, it was so easy to get like... Uh, bogged down by like conspiracy theories because all these pictures of Ghislaine Maxwell with every single celebrity like these Getty images and it was just that's how these moronic parties work and if Ghislaine is like a a rich woman so she's a host of this party and it's benefiting a charity every celebrity has got to take a picture with Ghislaine so it was really unfortunate for a lot of people who were probably innocent yeah. having their pictures with Ghislaine all over the internet like that yeah. sucks yeah well our next story Someone else who's the talk of the town today, Andrew Huberman, as we said, a New York Magazine article called Andrew Huberman's Mechanisms of Control, the Private and Public Seductions of the World's Biggest Pop Neuroscientist, dropped yesterday, and it was a the deep cover. dive into Mr. Huberman himself, what he practices and what he preaches and the disparity between the two. Did you, I up until the middle thought that this was a piece that Huberman like sat for. And it wasn't until she said uh, what his rep. His rep said. had responded to some charges. I, I thought it was just crazy that there was this big piece. And I thought he sat for that portrait that was on the cover. Anybody else? No, that's his artwork that has just been distorted. But the vibe I got, maybe I'm wrong. But I think this reporter started as a big fan of Huberman. Um, oh, and was listening to episodes and became really interested in Huberman and then wanted to write an article about him and started digging into him and found this thread that she then went off on. OK, so I feel like at the beginning, I thought that might have been it, too. But no, I think that this group of five women, it ends up being about these five women who all connected because they realized at the same time they were in, quote unquote, monogamous relationships with Andrew Huberman. They were all having unprotected sex with him. And now they're like best friends. Female friendship wins the Barbie movie, essentially. And I feel like they took their story to someone. And then this woman sort of backtracked and wrote this whole article from beginning to end. But the whole point of the article was these five women. The, the last three paragraphs were literally like, Female friendship runs through the invisible string. They're best friends. They have this group chat. There's 100 messages a day. They're going to meet in real life and do getaways together. Camp toast. Like, yeah. I felt Camp like Huberman. they had this story. They knew this sort of salacious thing about a, a very famous, famous person. And they took it to a journalist. And she wrote an article about it. That's how I felt. Okay, but the journalist is also saying that at one point she listened to the podcast and has been implementing Huber tips into her everyday life. It's the biggest podcast in the world. That's not shocking to me that someone who works in media would have listened to it. Yeah. So, and then obviously and then she, she like, I think she got this story and she made it personal. Like a good journalist would, you know? Yeah. So here's the tale that she is telling. She talks about Huberman, the story that he sells, and then right. what's really going on with him. Here's one paragraph that seems to sum up what she's trying to say. She said, quote, Huberman sells a dream of control down to the cellular level, but something has gone wrong. In the midst of immense fame, a chasm has opened between the podcaster preaching dopaminergic restraint and a man <laughs> with newfound wealth with access to a world unseen by most professors. The problem with a man always working on himself is that he may also be working on you. So at first when I read the article, I was like, oh, that's actually kind of an interesting take like and I feel like we talked about this with Jay Shetty like when your whole thing is minimalism and self-peace and shit like that but then you're ma uh, ma moderating uh officiating J-Lo and Ben Affleck's wedding how does that sort of monk lifestyle of nothingness and the celebrity lifestyle of everythingness how do you you know merge the two so at first I thought I'm like you know what that's kind of like an interesting take but then it became very clear that it was just about this woman Sarah and I had screenshotted a few things. So basically, Sarah was sort of the, the major player out of these five women who he was seeing at the same time and having unprotected sex with. That was kind of his biggest crime, I think the article tried to make it seem like. You know, you know, being a cheater isn't, 
you know, the most ethical thing, but it's not a crime. But having unprotected sex with women who trust you um, is definitely an, uh, an ethical gray area. It's not, it's not the right thing to do. Yeah, it's just really crazy that I'm reading about Huberman's condom usage in New York Magazine. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's something about, to me, it's like, this is not my plate. This is not my business. But it became abundantly clear to me that like there, there was a lot of stretching and reaching going on in this article when I read this slide. Mm -hmm. Sarah's relationship with Andrew began in February 2018 in the Bay Area where they both lived. He messaged her on Instagram and said he owned a home in Piedmont, a wealthy city separate from Oakland. That turned out not to be precisely true. He lived off of Piedmont Avenue, which was in Oakland. Okay, that reminded me of Gary. Remember they said Gary didn't live in Ohio. He lived in Cleveland or whatever. No. Like, oh, okay, by the way, people lie about where they live all the time. Like, you live a little close to the Upper East Side. You're like, I live on the Upper East Side. Like, oh, it's, cool. oh my God, literally, I live five blocks away from the Upper East Side. I'm on the Upper East Side. That's she wasn't literally on the Upper East Side after all. And the lies didn't stop there. It was Lenox Hill. Like, it's not a big deal to, like, sort of fudge the area that fudge. you live in. Like, of course, everybody's always going to say they live in the nicer part of town. Like, yeah, no. So that's like the what kicks off his string of lies. And the next nefarious act that he does is he's flaky. So Huberman is a flake. No, it's clear that he's like one of these all powerful men. Like almost, um, I feel like when you're nerdy, I feel like you can go a couple of ways. And when you get really famous for being nerdy, like I feel like I could totally see you becoming a fucking monster. Like who doesn't honor time commitments and who's rude. And there was a lot about his flakiness, but a lot about his dog. Oh, yeah, but you know what it was reminding me of this article? It was reminding me a little bit about Elon when I was That's reading what I was say. Elon's book and some of his quirkier behavior, I guess you would say. And then it reminded me of what Elon said on SNL. Like, I'm a genius. You didn't think I was actually going to be a cool guy, too. Like, right. There is, by the way, there's obviously an element of, like, Asperger's when it comes to Elon, correct? Yes. Right. Like, you can't be everything to everyone all at once. You right. can't, be, you can't coolest... be, like, the smartest person in the world constantly working and working on, like, literally eight world-changing companies and also just be, like, a cool guy to be around. Right. And, like, grab a beer with. Everyone's it's just not... favorite guy. So I think that was becoming clear at the beginning of the article. Like, he takes himself so seriously. He's obviously really, really smart. He acts like an ass because he thinks he can. Like, he's someone I would literally never pursue a friendship or a relationship no, with. He sounds no. like a nightmare. Nightmare. But it's always the people who are like, yeah, you would think like Huberman has all of his protocols for ways to live your best life physically, mentally, and right. just like get on the best page. So yeah, I guess you might be surprised to find out that he's not perfect in his real life. It's Tony Robbins. Yeah. What? But Tony Robbins was actually accused of like a little bit more of a, I don't remember exactly, but it was like, you know, the, the really toxic workplace, sexual harassment in the workplace. Yeah, nothing here is illegal of what he, right. like, he's just being accused of being like a flaky cheater. Freak, creep, honestly, like big time loser. So but then there, there was like this thread through the article where he was too obsessed with his dog. And I was like, okay, that's also not a crime. I don't know why we're including this in the article. Are the, like, they didn't have that much because he, him caring about his dog. Listen to this. When they were together, he was buzzing, anxious. He's like, oh, my dog needs his blanket this way. And I'm like, your dog is just laying there super cozy. Why are you being weird about the blanket? I literally wrote a note, Ben. Ben, like, the dogs are fine and Ben is futzing with them nonstop. Is that article worthy? I don't think so. No, that's me with Brew. His heating pad's not turned up to the level that he wants. Yeah, sure, he's he's okay, but he could right. be cozier. You gotta futz with the ones you love. It's called maturing in Yiddish. I do and it with also, my nieces. Like, it's so funny because when I do it with Brew, there's like an, a level of comedy to it. But if you take that out, it sounds psychotic. Like it's psychotic. Huberman's just like you know, uh, what's the word? Like LARPing with his dog. Yes. So then we get to the part of the article where he actually starts to do things that are unethical, like cheating on his partner. So Sarah is the main girl, and I'm sure that's not her real name. Um, so this is when she discovers him cheating. In August 2021, Sarah says she read Andrew's journal. And discovered a reference to cheating. She says she was gutted. I hear you are saying, I hear you are saying you are angry and hurt. He texted her that same day. I will hear you as much and as long as needed for us. So you're at a point in a relationship where you're reading your man's journal, like, which is so invasive. Now, I feel like this is going to be probably my hottest take of the article. But and I, I want to preface. I want to say yeah. it says a reference to cheating. Like, what is like hardcore I'm cheating on her and also was he not being honest in his journal because it turns out he's dating like four people at the same time is he is that what you saw the truth right or do you see like 
Is he lying in his journal? And so, by the way, the next year she discovers him cheating again. And it's because she's snooping through his phone. So this is obviously a relationship with no trust. And I hate... This is... I don't know how to phrase this in a way where people aren't going to be like, Claudia, you're a misogynist. Or that you're victim blaming. Because if, if the roles were reversed, you'd say right. that a man doing it to a woman. Right. But I don't think it's like, I don't think it could be considered victim blaming. He wasn't abusive. He was just a fucking freak. But it's like, this is a woman. And by the way, Sarah has two kids. After she finds out he's cheating, after she claims that he would go on, you know, days where he was so angry, like he was obviously like a, a terrible, terrible partner and boyfriend and, and just person, honestly. She takes her two kids and she moves in with him. She moves to Malibu. She moves her whole family out to Malibu. Especially when a lot of his anger was about her children, she said. She said he would get she really She said angry. having a second child was a big mistake and he you need to admit really that. He would get really angry that she's been with other people and that she has children and that her having a second child was a huge mistake and he would be really angry about that. So you stay with this person and you move in with him with your children? And the whole time in the article, they maintain that Sarah is a successful independent woman. She's a huge feminist. She's not someone who can be easily manipulated. Like they sort of maintain that like she's not a victim. She She's this sort of all powerful woman. So you're in this years long toxic relationship with a man who says your children are a mistake, who has cheated on you, you've now discovered, who gave you an STD. Because you were like, I thought we're not having sex with other people. I just had a uh, tested positive for HPV. Yeah, so she was only having sex with him. He said he was monogamous too. She never had HPV before. And then she tests positive for HPV. And so I just feel like there needs to be like accountability on all parts. Like the, the, the thesis from this article is like, Andrew Huberman is a fucking freak. Absolutely everyone should stay away from him in regards to romantic and working relationships. Seriously, I would literally, like he sounds like a nightmare. That is fact. That is... But like, what is Sarah doing? Like, <laughs> what is Sarah doing? And like, I don't know if it's like so crazy that I'm saying this because I I just feel like there are equal parts blame blame to lay on everyone. Like, and these other women, we don't really hear from the other four. Just that like he would see them, you know, for periods of time monogamously, but then it turned out that he wasn't monogamous. They didn't sort of have as they were living role. with him. Right. I mean, they didn't have a main role in the article. He would fly them out. But it was really Sarah. Sarah yeah. was sort of the main, his main girl. Um, and I just, I couldn't gather, I couldn't wrap my head around the, the author saying, this is a powerful, smart, successful, feminist, independent woman who moves her two children in with a man who has cheated on her and who apparently goes on days long angry rants. Right. And goes missing for days and... I don't like, know. Something miss. wasn't adding up. And the thing is, all of this is told from Sarah's POV. Huberman did not sit down for this article. No, but his, he responds his rep to a couple of the charges. His rep certain things. Yeah, and they, she, uh, like, hard, like, straight up denied them. And at a certain point, it's kind of like he said, she said. There were also things that Huberman said that were in quotations. Like, that Sarah said, Huberman said, and they are in quotations. So, were they said over text, or how do you have a quote of that? A lot of it was also transcribed podcasts, which I found almost illegible. No, but Sarah will say, like, we got into an argument and yes, he yes, said yes. this. Yeah. How do you have a quotation of what someone said? Unless it was, oh, they're all text messages, in which case the author should have said, I saw the, the text message said this. I don't know. I just feel like it's very telling that this was like a, you know, a basically first person description from Sarah. So we don't even have, and there are two sides to every story. And I think, you know, there's her truth, his truth, and the version of the truth. That's always the case. This is her truth. I don't find it that compelling on her behalf. And we haven't even heard from Huberman in terms of how he say things went down. He comes back and says, no, that never happened. Or no, that was in 2021, not 2022. But we don't have his account of things. No, and even she, there was one point where she says they were together and he, she saw him cheating on someone, cheating on her with someone like on the couch in his living room. He lives in a glass yes, house. Yes, yes, that's see. a third time. And so then she left. She took a picture of the woman's car just to like try and find her afterwards, but couldn't find her. Right. And it's like, okay. And he says at that time that they were not together, which they shouldn't be together after everything else that went wrong between them. So it's like, say they're not together. And she walks up to his house. is like peeping. <laughs> peeping Tom. Peeping through his window, like taking pictures, running plates. <laughs> running plates. No, it's, she sounds like a crazy person from a movie, from a book. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, also another line that I was just like, oh, they really need things. In private, he could seem less concerned about patriarchy. <laughs> because like she like she the the journalist spoke to a lot of women and he liked, you know, sex that was, you know, very, I would say traditional 
traditionally heterosexual, you know, submissive woman, man in charge, very much some of the novels that I read. And so even though I on mean, his podcast- I'm sorry, look at him. What do you think he of likes? Of course, of course. Jackie, he looks like a caveman. And like, so on his podcast, he preaches about patriarchy, but in the bedroom, he slaps a woman's ass. Like, I'm sorry. I think actually no. two things can be true at once. I'm sorry, but why are we reading this? Like, this is not our business. So the whole article is really trying to make it seem like he's this sort of master manipulator. And I actually, you know what? I'm sure he is. But the article ends, and when I when the article ended this way, and I will read it to you, it was so deeply unserious. The I don't even think the name Andrew Huberman was in the last three paragraphs. It's about these women. On any given day, one of the five, the women, can go into an appointment and come back to 100 texts from the group chat. Someone shared a Reddit thread in which a commenter claimed Tuberman had a stable full of hoes. And another responded, I hope he thinks of us more like Care Bears. At which point, they assigned themselves Care Bear na names. Quote, him, you're the only girl I let come to my apartment read a meme someone shared. Under it was a yellow lab looking extremely skeptical. They regularly use his usual response to, expl to explicit photos mm, to comment on pictures of one another's pets. They are holding space for other women who might join. Quote, this group has radicalized me, Sarah tells me. Quote, there has been so much processing, unquote. They are planning a weekend together this summer. Quote, it could have been sad or bitter, says Eve, another woman. We didn't jump in as besties, but real friendships have been built. It has been, in a strange and unlikely way, quite a beautiful experience. What's so crazy That's is... That's the end of this, this page long, pages long article. This is a real life version of our favorite movie. Barbie. Barbie. The other oh, woman. the other woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know why. When the other woman did it, it wasn't annoying. No, because like she saw he was cheating and then she set out to ruin his life, not like moved in with him, stayed, like knew exactly that he was a dirty scoundrel. Yeah. And then I don't know what, I don't even know what had to happen here for her to finally be done with him unless he broke up with her. Yeah, they never really even got to like the end of the relationship, like yeah. how it ended. Yeah. And when. Then also the author then goes into his backstory because yes. he tells this tale this is how she sums it up um of his life childhood of his childhood and the things that sort of built him so he said she said for the past three years one of the biggest podcasters on the planet has told a story to millions of listeners across half a dozen shows there was a little boy and the boy's family was happy until one day the boy's family fell apart the boy was sent away he floundered he found therapy he found science he found exercise and he became strong so that's sort of his origin story his parents divorced his parents were he said they, like, after the him. divorce, they neglected him, like full neglect. Yeah. And I think he got into a bit of trouble. He was sent to like a hardening school. For a month. For a month there. He found therapy, which kind of opened up his world. And he found science and exercise and whatnot. And then she also says on the other side of the coin. Science and exercise. Yeah. Honestly, he's Elizabeth Zott. And by the way, she's a freak too. Thousand percent. It's, you know. Yep. But she also yep. says then there's a version of Huberman's story, which is also the truth, where it's like he his father was a Stanford professor. He was born in Stanford Hospital and he grew up to be a Stanford professor. Like it's yeah, not and his that mom crazy. like was it his mom was an author. He grew up like, you know, not it's not a hard life the way we would see it, you know, compared to someone else. Not else's. like absent of privilege, but he never said he came from impoverished circumstances or anything. And so when he was in high school, he started getting into trouble, you know, he was kind of acting out after his parents divorce and they ended up sending him away for a month and she interviewed people who were in his high school and were like well he, we never saw him getting into fights or getting into any trouble so I don't know what they're talking about and I feel like um that's not necessarily proof that he wasn't going through hard times I feel like a lot of the times when kids are going through hard things like most of it happens at home and they present like a normal facing life when they go to school literally and talk to a couple people from high school they don't know what the fuck they're worried about themselves they're not there to be a historian for one classmate who would they never expect 30 years later is going to become a big deal then she did try to infer that he might not have ever been sent away because Huberman wouldn't share, or his representative, wouldn't share with the journalist what the name of the facility was called. And, you know, whatever the reason might be, either maybe he didn't go to a facility or he just didn't want her digging around in this place for things about him. Like, why give her a lead on a story? Figure it out yourself. Like, you yeah. can. Um, and she sort of inferred, or she didn't say it, but she sort of left it. Like, it's, you know. It could be it not does, true. It doesn't sound like he went to a facility It like could that. be a lie. Is what she's saying. Yeah. Yeah. And that he's a liar. 
And so I think with the Jay Shetty thing, which this reminded me of, they had a lot of concrete proof that like when he said he wasn't in India, he actually was posting YouTube videos in North London. Like there was actual proof that he had, you know, been either confused or, you know, not telling the truth about his background. She you you can't for certain say that. That's like one of the rules of journalism. Like you yeah. have to. No, have but proof. she didn't say it. She's just being dishonest and leaving it hanging there. She also tried to come for his lab at Stanford and say it's like yes, just that it doesn't a couple exist. classrooms on the second floor of a building. Like what? And then Stanford like put out a statement saying like no, this is a functioning lab and we're actually moving it to another moving building. It. Yeah, and she also had said at the beginning that his lab was so popular, people come and visit tours. They have authorized personnel-only stickers on all the doors so fans don't come. So in the beginning of the article, there is a lab, but then later on she questions whether the lab ever existed. Yeah, and it's just a bunch of mice being sprayed running around. Right. Now, I don't know where I end with this because I really don't know Huberman. Like, I'm not going to die on the stake for him. But I do feel like... I read this account and it really the whole article was Sarah's account of this relationship. And I don't really think Sarah came out looking that favorable. So it makes me think like once you hear someone else's side of the story, the truth is a version in the middle. Yeah. So I'm hearing your version and it's not even that compelling. Yeah. And I see I just, gaps for where he could be like, no, this is what happened and this is where we thought we were at. I just think Huberman is a guy who's really smart with a popular podcast who's a fucking freak weirdo ass loser like seriously no, and like, i don't know I if that's i don't know if that's him. worthy of an article of the cover of new york magazine especially given how much is going on in the world currently right i just don't think i didn't think it was you know it was a long article and i read the whole thing and i was bored by it i was it was really long and there was so much podcast transcription, which I didn't really, I, I get the, she was trying to make a point every time she transcribed a part of his podcast. She would find something where he said, I like cheese. And then she would tell a story from Sarah where he said he didn't like cheese. Just basically the whole thesis being the person you see on the podcast is not the person you see in real life. And I feel like that's fine. I feel like that's fine too. Especially because there's no, um, there was nothing that said like this stuff that he's sharing is, oh, they tried to come for AG1 though. Oh my God, I'm so glad you brought that up. There's nothing that says that the stuff that he's sharing like isn't actually really beneficial and people are changing their lives because of it and like that's a net positive thing. So how can we go and ruin it and ruin this person, of course. Right. But the one discrepancy is that he does ads for AG1 and then there are other people who are saying that AG1 doesn't have enough of the vitamins and minerals that they the, the claim to have. <sighs> Did I screenshot that? Because I she sent it said, to you. Oh, then yes. She said that... Um, you know, another thing against him is that he, I think one of his biggest sponsors for every episode is AG1. And she said, it is something to hear someone who sells himself as a Stanford University scientist just back from the lab proclaim that the $79 a month powder covers all your foundational nutritional needs. So she said, in an industry not noted for its integrity, AG1, according to writer and professional debunker Derek Barris. So, um... How is a writer and professional debunker, his word, more valuable than a scientist, first of all? And by the way, I don't know the science behind AG1. I just think, like, that's not an equal thing. And I just feel like with doctors, like, because I find this way, I feel this way about Ozempic. Like, you can find a doctor to say whatever you want. Like, I see doctors on social media doing podcast interviews saying one thing about Ozempic and then another doctor saying the exact opposite on a podcast about it. They're both doctors. Yeah. No, you really so, can find someone to say anything that you want. And it could be a doctor who went to a good uh, school. Like, it's not, and this guy isn't even a doctor. He's a professional debunker. That's not a job. Right. And so he said that AG1 is not what, it, it doesn't have the benefits that he claims to have. Oh, therefore, like Huberman's a sellout? Please. Like, I can't. I can't. Yeah. It's, I can't. It's, it was a lot. It was such a, it, like, it was the stretch of Her the arm hurts, I'm sure. Yeah. One from all the typing. Well, and for sure, it was so long. It was so unnecessarily long. I and I was just the, waiting for the big bombshell. I'm like, what did he do? He, well, the one, like, the craziest allegation to me in terms of, you know, okay, am I in the weeds on his personal life now? Is like that day where he's flying in one girl. Yeah. Me, texting with another girl. Sending, like, Meeting coffee, Eve for coffee. Like, literally the juggling is And crazy. maybe that's and because his tips are so useful. He, has, he optimizes his life. He, has he too optimizes much free time. A thousand percent. He's optimized. No, he's a freak. His he has like a, He has a. Uh, he thinks he's like a prophet. 
He has this obvious like superiority complex. He thinks he's godlike. And that's how these freaks, especially men, behave. Yeah, also the way that he speaks like, uh, you know, turbo Dopamogenic. Turbo therapy speak. He's the example of someone who's- who, who really shows like maybe therapy is not for everyone and there is such thing as too much therapy and you don't have to be going to therapy your entire life. Look what happens. Like this is what he said to someone. I'm willing to do the repair work on this. Like if... I want to fix truck. this. I'm I want to fix... <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I want to fix this. Five words like... This sucks but doesn't deter my desire and commitment to see you and establish clear lines of communication and trust. I'm sorry. I want to work on this. I want to work on things. No, and you think he's Things so obsessed with productivity, he would use less words to save time. S- word salad, yummy, yummy, humor in addition. No, no. Humor is a fucking freak. I want to know who Eve the actress is. Oh, of course I do too. I have something kind of crazy to say. You think she's like community theater? No, 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 no. <laughs> about who I thought it was. Oh, I don't think you can say. Oh, I have no proof. I just envisioned her in my head as this person. Okay, who? I have zero, zero proof. It is 100% not true. But every time the person was talking, I'm like, this sounds like Amber Heard. Oh, that's so funny. She came to mind to me, for me too, but based on what I've read about Amber Heard, especially from Elon's book, like this isn't, she doesn't fit the profile. Okay, okay. She doesn't fit the profile. Like Amber Heard would never be like the second in this story. They gave no clues as to who Amber was. Like there's no Easter eggs <laughs> that we can sort of figure it. Oh, <laughs> What did I say, Amber Heard? You said who Amber was. <laughs> they gave no clues as to who Eve was. And, a, um, and a clearly Amber Heard like, likes an evil genius. No, it could be her. Though I don't think Elon's evil. No, for sure. I wouldn't um, slander my boy like that. Crazy. I enjoyed recapping that article immensely. Yeah, that was fun. And I, I honestly... I didn't even know what Huberman, that he had all these credentials. He's I didn't very even know he impressive. was a professor. Yeah, and that he like does both. Get you a prof that can do both. No, he's a freak and I'm obsessed. I just want to say that was the first time in my life I've said prof. And like. What does it mean? It's like shorthand for professor. Some people like call their professors prof. Who? And <laughs> I just want to say like, I want to apologize because. Take it back. It was so wrong of me to say such a thing. It was so disturbing. I've literally never heard that. And in I didn't my life. like the experience. Okay, well, you have to learn when you try new things. Like I tried like something new don't. on and it wasn't for me, and I wasn't being authentic to my true self. Prof. I thought it was um, sort of like an abbreviation for profit. I'm like, oh, because he thinks he's a prophet. That's better because also it's prof, no? Professor. It's 100% prof. Prof is profit. That's why I thought it. Okay, if you're someone who uses PROF, Go life. away. Go away. Yeah, but it's, is it prof or prof? Or is prof, it neither? but just... By the way, maybe people don't say that. I've never heard anyone say that. Maybe people just write it. Oh, for sure. But there's no period after when they say it. When they write it. I, I can't get bogged down in the like mindset of losers. I really can't. <laughs> also, who's like talking to their professor that much? I like literally couldn't run fast enough away from my professors. <laughs> You know, what if I your professor was Huberman? Could you imagine? I cer- if my professor was Huberman, like I, I could see like a young impression with me becoming obsessed with him. Of course, but that's the difference. Sarah, like they said a million times, was this accomplished, successful, smart, independent feminist mother of two. Right. So either she wasn't, or Huberman wasn't like this almighty, powerful being. And also, yeah, that raises a good point. Like he, if he was such a nefarious actor, like he has students, like right. He has. I just think if he was, if he was like that crazy awful, there would be when you do an article like this and you do research into someone's background, there would be way more people, former students, former classmates, graduate, whatever, who would have come forward, not just five scorned ex lovers. No, like the worst thing that he does in his life is that he's like flaky and tardy, and he didn't take the camping trip when he said they were going to go camping. The camping trip, like that was weird. Imagine if every time, like, if there was an article about you, and it's like Claudia said that she was going to go to the Berkshires, and we never went to the Berkshires like oh but that was weird when the guy like spent his own money getting scuba certified (laughs) like that is so mean like Huberman's such a dick but also like what is this guy doing like (laughs) no the moral of the story is like I don't want to hang out with Huberman I don't want to talk to Huberman I don't want to date Huberman 
But he still can have a successful podcast. Yeah, two things can be true. Yeah, and I could imagine myself listening to his podcast being like, oh my God, this guy's insufferable. No, especially if he talks on his podcast the way these texts are. I don't know how so many people listen to that. I know. And by the way, did you see Spotify just released their, um, they never released their numbers, but they did just release what the top subscribe shows to, subscribe to shows are, which really is kind of like a meaningless figure. You can have a ton of subscribers and nobody listens to your podcast, but a bunch of people listen to your podcast, but they just don't subscribe. So it kind of is a meaningless number. But Huberman is like officially the number two podcast. Oh no, he was number three after TED Talks. Um, but I don't like to consider like the Daily and NPR or all of these. I don't like to consider them actual competitors. I think it's more impressive like to be a when billion a dollar media upstart. company. When it's yeah, you better have the biggest podcast. So I think of like Joe Rogan, Huberman, like people starting their own shtick. So impressive. And Huberman was right behind Joe Rogan. Well, I think that makes sense because I think a lot of Huberman's audience came from Joe Rogan who already listened to yeah. podcasts on Spotify because he like goes on Joe Rogan so often. I think that's where he got his start. I think it was too. Yeah. Huberman was always just like an idea to me. And I'm glad to know that actually what I thought Huberman was is what he does. Talking about yeah. sunlight, drinking water. Yeah. To have a magenic energy. Okay. But what is he saying about coffee? The video that was, what was the thesis? You don't drink have coffee to, or do drink coffee? Do drink coffee, but not immediately after you wake up. He said, minimum 10 minutes you have to go by after you wake up. <laughs> Who the fuck drinks coffee within 10 minutes of waking up? Within five. Like, oh, a lot less, of people. Like, no, no, a lot of people wait, do it before they brush their teeth. Pee? Br no, you pee, brush your teeth. And then you have to brew it. Like, it takes a few minutes. And I think, like, you should get your sunlight in before that. Something like that. I don't think that 10 minute thing is a real tip because that's die. Duh. Also, don't you roll over and say, who wakes up immediately? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think, definitely think like the Huberman lifestyle is like probably not for us. But I think a lot of it is actually pretty obvious based on what you're saying. I think Hubermeisters wake up immediately though, because I think like snoozing and scrolling on your is phone is against Hubermeister productivity. It's bad for productivity. And I agree with that. And like seeing, yeah. like, you know, bad news. Oh my God, Jackie, we're events. ready over an hour. Man, this is we talked story. about Hubermeister for 40 minutes. I could talk about oh, it no. more. We did P. Diddy. I forgot about I'm that. I'm not done with Huberman. I'm never going to be done with Huberman. I'm never. Look at the man. Like, I'm we'll obsessed. never be done. My king right there. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, but these are the unintended consequences of dumb fucking journalism like that. And it's like, aren't these journalists like embarrassed to be falling into this trope of like, oh, someone gets successful overnight. Let's go find their tweets and talk to an ex-girlfriend. Like, don't you want to be taken seriously as a writer? Because you're a joke no, now. This, like, this kind of behavior gets rewarded in the world of journalism and they do get true. taken seriously as writers in their own little world. Bubble. So I'm sure it was a good day for the author, but I don't know. I was seeing like a lot of the And by the way, I didn't tweets. look, but the author was a woman. Yes. I see her. Not that it matters. I just wanted to know. Yeah. It felt like it was written by a woman. And I do mean that in a negative way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would have. I mean, I, it would be weird if a man wrote this, like about women. Like it's yeah. women's voice. I think it's yeah, appropriate it is. that it was written by a woman. I agree. I was kidding. Yeah. So that's the latest. We'll wait for Huberman to release a statement or a video. I know. By the way, do you think, what is Hubermeister's PR strategy going to be? Like, just on to the next? He obviously, like, the only place he would really say something is his podcast. He doesn't, like, seem like the type of person to release a statement on Instagram. He, I don't know. It depends how much he cares about public opinion. If he's really, like, a renegade and he's like, fuck him. Well, sometimes people do care about public opinion, but these types of situations where they get, like, attacked by the media turn them into, like, a renegade, fuck him. Yeah. That's how a lot of people end up renegades. I just don't think, I don't know, how old is he? 40 something professor, like that he's going to crawl into the shell over this. I don't think he's going to give a fuck, honestly. And because if, if, also, he, if he is as nutty as the article made him seem, he won't care. I don't know, actually. If he's as nutty as the article made him seem, he's going to like, he's going to freak out. No, because she really alluded many times to him being a narcissist. And narcissists love attention, like, even if it's bad, Tom Sandoval. Hmm. Well, I also think that this article, aside from us, like has not had the intended effect. Agreed. I think a lot of people are reading right through this and being like, okay, yeah, if this were my boyfriend, I wouldn't like this, but this is someone's personal business. No, also a lot of people feel like this article was paid for by Big Pharma because Huberman is very much like anti-pharma, you know, bettering yourself through wellness and nature. And he has a really enormous influence and he might be hurting Big Pharma. That's a kind of conspiracy theory I like. Yeah, it's giving dope sick, you know? 
they're trying to take down Huberman because Huberman's getting people off medication. Yeah. Claudia, you just cracked the case wide open. I mean, I did it. That's what people were saying. They cracked the case. Yeah. Because, you know, he's like, go eat a plant instead of taking an Advil, things you like know, that. And if you live well, then you'll, you'll find that you don't need as much, a, as much medication and all those it's things. True. So just I'm glad we got to the bottom of that. Me too. It's always big pharma. So true. Are you ready for our next story? I just want to make sure like your camera is still recording and stuff. I just get like pits yeah, still, you know? So far, yeah. Me and Jackie were saying yesterday before the show that we feel like we're due for a tech issue. A tech and malady. I, it, if it went off during Huber Meister recap, I would have been so upset. So I'm glad we're still good. We're still good. Okay. Our next story, our next three are like, you know, light pop culture. So we'll try to keep it under two hours. Suki Waterhouse and Robert Pattinson have welcomed their bebe. They confirmed the arrival of their first child on a sweet family stroll in L.A. this week. It's really, really, really hard to see people out here living your dream. Like, for real, this one hurt. And I actually happen to really like Suki Waterhouse, which softens the blow. But it's it's tough. Like, that family stroll. I think they had the bugaboo, you know, whatever everyone has. No, so I don't recognize this stroller emblem which is curious to me. I love seeing what kind of strollers people have. I'm obsessed with strollers. And it looks like a bugaboo or up a baby, but it's not. So I wonder what it is. Well, I'm sure some a mom group has figured it out, you know? Yeah, maybe it's a British brand. Yeah, but they were in LA, no? Yeah, but maybe like because they're such British influencers, like a British baby brand sent them stuff. And I feel like them having this baby sort of quietly and not announcing it the only reason we know is because they went for a stroll and took a picture like this baby could be a month old we don't even know so elite of them they are so chic and so fabulous and again that should be me holding his hand that should be me birthing his babe but i'm happy for them me too they hadn't announced the gender but i think because they went for the pink stroller it's a girl oh i guess that's like yeah yeah. Very, very heteronormative of us. No, not heteronormative. It's heteronormative of us to assume, but I think... I think it's a safe it's assumption. It's a fair assumption. Yeah. Um, what do we think the name is going to be? They're so, you know... Ooh. Oh, it's definitely going to be something like... Archer. Oh, no, that's a little... That's a little serious. I feel it would be more something like Willow. Tree. Pain. Rain. What'd you say? Tree pain. Oh, I said rain. Oh, that's funny. Water. Yeah, something breezy like that. Stream. Breezy. I love the name Breezy. Breezy Pattinson. Love. Probably Breezy Waterhouse Pattinson. That's, that's a mouthful. I, I do. There are a couple that I would like to know their baby name. Me too. Because this is so um, oddly traditional of them. And I feel like as two individuals, they're so, the, like, you know, unorthodox in so many ways. Very artistic, free spirit energy. Um, so them just, like, you know, getting together and having a baby is so sort of 1960s of them. Love. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? If it's our next story, which, speaking of love, is brought to you by Hinge. Yes. Hinge makes the profile creation process less daunting by making it easy to get your friends involved. And what's so great about Hinge is that it's a dating app that's designed to be deleted because it really works. So they have this new voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me. You can lean on your friends to hype up potential matches. So Jackie, let's say we were single gals and you were making my profile for me. What voice memo would you write? This is your take on why, you, why someone should date me. You should date Turdy because she is such a wonderful human being so true. charismatic true so beautiful very true and she will enhance your life in every way isn't it so fun if you like people already like get all their friends together and help make dating profiles for each other but this is like a really collaborative way to do it it's so fun it makes it so much like less scary and just easier yeah lightens it up a bit and a great way to get to know someone on the other side too yeah, and I love also um, then when you're scrolling through people, it makes scrolling so much more fun because you get to hear all these other people and like people get really creative and funny with it and it's fabulous. So download Hinge, try the voice prompts today and then find someone worth deleting the app for. We're actually sitting down right now with a Hinge success story. Jackie and her husband, you know, met each other in real life but also matched on Hinge. It made it like a lot less weird for them. So there's proof in the pudding. I know a million people who are literally married. Hinge is like so legit. So that's the one. Oh yeah, everyone... Mo a majority of couples that I know that are married met on Hinge or connected via Hinge. Now, the uh, 
Remainder of our episode is sponsored by Caden Lane. And Jackie, before I dive in, is there anything you want to say? I know you die for Caden Lane. You guys, if you people ask me for newborn advice, baby Rex, all the time, my number one is Caden Lane, especially in the newborn phase when they're just in pajamas and you want ones that cover the hands, cover the feet, but also you can open the hands and that zip from the top and from the bottom. Kate and are made of the best, coziest material for your bebe. They deserve to be in the lap of comfort all the time. Caden Lane. Oh, with the cutest styles for you to look at. Caden so Lane. The, the pajamas Jackie's talking about, their new Color Me pajama sets are the latest obsession. The materials are eco-friendly, but still super comfortable. They do not break down after you wear them a few times. And their bamboo pajamas are thicker, stronger, and longer lasting than any large baby or kid brand on the market. So... Caden Lane is just on a mission to make mom's lives easier. So in their Color Me pajamas, they make bedtime really fun and enjoyable. They hide the extra zips and snaps in the outfits to make it easier for moms to get everyone dressed. For the younger littles, check out their popular body styles like rash guards, tankinis, one pieces, all uh, with extra snaps or zippers to make sure outfits or diaper changes are quick and easy. So Caden Lane is just like forward thinking and everything is just made better it's, it's giving engineer you know Caden Lane is your one-stop shop for all your newborn infant and toddler apparel head to cadenlane.com slash toast 20 and use code toast 20 for 20 percent off your order again that's c-a-d-e-n-l-a-n-e.com backslash toast two zero for 20 percent off and make sure you use our promo code toast 20 so they know that we sent you thank you letter de Lou. you're welcome our next story is a little movie news Timothy Chalamet has transformed into Bob Dylan on set of the new Bob Dylan biopic. I didn't realize he was playing him. I had saw this on like TikTok or something. But Timothy will star as the folk musician in the upcoming film called A Complete Unknown. He was photographed Sunday, spotted, strolling around New York City's Chelsea neighborhood in another outfit reminiscent of Dylan's wardrobe. Um, I feel like to be a male actor right now is to lose a role to Timothy Chalamet. Like, is he ever not cat? Like, he's literally the biggest movie star. June, Wonka, he's, no, he's everything. He's literally the biggest movie star. How does he's that happen? He's always filming. So- I don't know. He's so tiny. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's so actually emblematic of our gener, well, of this generation, where, like, what we find to be, like, the most attractive male, like, we prior to this we had our you know miles teller our brad pitts our big strong strapping men and now like styles have changed like skinny short kind of like feminine men are the vibe and that's timothy chalamet he is like his generation's bond you know yeah he is 510 so it's not short but it's not it's short for it's short for like the you know the beauty standard but I also feel like sometimes men in Hollywood are short, like Tom Cruise. Yes, yes. They're shorter than you think. Yeah. What's Kylie's height? Do you think they're still together? She's 5'6". She's shorter than I thought. Are they still together? I don't know. I hope so. I hope so, too. They're my favorite couple now. Like, I was just into them. But I'm into whoever Kylie's into, you know? It's true. Like, when her and Travis were, like, really, like, public and they did that Vogue thing where they, like, sat and answered questions about each other, like, I was obsessed. Yeah. So she makes me like whoever she likes. Yeah, that's true. I think they're still together. Um, Now, Bob Dylan, I, this is going to be like one of the (laughs) most embarrassing things I'm I'm ever going to say. I'm glad you're saying it because I'm thinking it. Okay. Bob Dylan isn't black? And I think I get Bob Dylan confused with Bob Marley. Yes, yes. Who the fuck is Bob Dylan? Who the fuck is Bob Dylan? I don't know. Now, I think he's a folk singer. Let me I'm pull him up I'm 90% on Spotify. sure that Bob Dylan is actually Jewish. And he's like a very famous proud Jew whose work we should know. And I do know that he sings. He's the one who originally wrote that Adele song. To make you feel my love. Are you sure about that? Why would no. he? No. Oh, he wrote. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Claudia, we're really dumb. Knocking on heaven's door. Knock, 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 knock it. But that, to me, that could have been Bob Marley. Like a Rolling Stone. Not familiar. Blowing in the wind. Is that the answer, my, Sir, friend, my friend? Is blowing in the wind. Yes. The answer is blowing in the wind. Uh, <laughs> Hurricane. Every song is called Hurricane. By the way, make you feel my love. Yes or no? No, no. I just went to his Spotify. Bob Dylan. Why would he have written that song? I think he wrote it and like it was, you know, successful for him. But then Adele covered it and like now everyone thinks it's Adele's song. That happens oh. sometimes. Oh. 
Oh Did my you know gosh, it? yes. Yeah. No, I'm like smart like that. Excuse I totally me, that's not this whole Mandela time. original? Oh no, you didn't know that? No. Oh my God, no. That song always makes me think of that episode of Glee after Finn died. We used to sing in the car and I used to sing alone. Oh, so sad. Um, yeah, he wrote that song and Adele covered it and like popularized it. That's like, that just knocked me off my feet. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Bob Dylan. Let me see Bob Dylan Jew. He yeah he is Jewish. It's all coming back to me now. But I definitely confuse him and Bob Marley. Yeah, me too. Because I thought there would be more backlash over Timothy Chalamet playing Bob Dylan. Oh yeah, if big, Bob Dylan, big what? Jew, big Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like actually I need to see this movie, given the fact that I know nothing. Do you think that the actor should have been a Jew? Timothy Chalamet is Jewish. He is Jewish. No, I was going to say, I thought there would be backlash because I thought Bob Dylan was black. I'm like, Timothy Chalamet playing this great black artist. Where is the outrage? Yeah. No, But Claudia. I was wrong. I was wrong. Oh, so it's, it's a good casting. Yes, and actually, I feel like we should see this movie because it sounds like, you know, we need to respect Bob Dylan a little bit more. For sure. So we will see the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, I wouldn't know anything about Johnny Cash if I never saw Walk the Line. It's so true. A biopic. It's important. Really really I, um educates. I can't know everything about everyone I'm sorry okay so true what's like a a biopic what's your favorite movie biopic that's a good question because we loved Walk the Line growing up we did I need to see a list of biopics yeah yeah like Elvis obviously that's definitely not my favorite but it wasn't a great bi it was a good movie but not like an amazing biopic what Elvis yeah I agree. Because it was like not serious. No, and like learning someone start to finish, like how their career went is fascinating. I don't like when movies uh, zone in on like two weeks in someone's life. Oh, totally. Okay, this list of biopics is like not what I am looking for because they're not all like famous people in that sense. Yeah. I watched the... Uh, like What's the Wolf name? of Wall Street is technically a biopic. Like, oh my God, people! I hate when Google like doesn't get us. He doesn't understand the assignment. So annoying. Biopic movies. Oh, Secretariat. That was a great biopic. About That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like Selena was a very good biopic. It was. Yeah. And educational. You know that. Oh look, what's here already? Soon. One life. <sighs> Lol. Oh, I mean, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody and Elton. Oh, yeah, Elton. But no, I wouldn't. Like, those were really popular biopics. But in terms of, like, being really good and deep, they were just, like, fun. Yeah, and, like, beautiful. Yeah. Like, really well done. I feel like... Honestly, Walk the Line from everything I'm seeing... Walk the Line was really good. Was really good. Yeah. Okay. They're saying Amadeus also about Mozart, but I heard that wasn't good. And I Oh, like, where'd you read that on your Mozart fan fiction forum? <laughs> and like, did you even know there was one? Oh, it's from 1984. So it's like. You probably would love it. You should watch it. Maybe I will. Report back. I want a, a two page essay on <laughs> Amadeus. Okay. That is funny. Yeah. Like, oh, I, Tanya. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, move on. I agree. On. I agree. It's move on, please. I can't oh, with the research. The like we're biopic. we're getting nowhere. The, the great showman. showman. Yeah, done. Okay, fifth and final story. Yeah, the Bachelorette has been named, and it is the first Asian leading lady for season twenty-one. Oh, Jen, I know that. Jen Tran, who was a contestant from Joey season, which I saw just ended, um, she has been named the leading lady for the Bachelorette season twenty-one. I feel like The Bachelor this season, like, low-key was making waves. I feel like low-key it was good. Low -key. Classic. When I say low-key, I feel like Tom Hiddleston. Low-key? <laughs> that's his character, right? I think so. That's his, yeah. Low-key, that's how I say it. Um, bachelor. The Bachelor looks good this season. Yeah, well, it's over, and I just saw who won, so. I saw pictures, but I feel like I wouldn't know if I, like, if I had a sick day soon, I think I might. Binge The Bachelor. Oh, that's like kind of crazy. It's over. Like, you, please don't waste your time binging no. something that you can't recap on the podcast. Like, Oh, that's so true. But unless I did it like tomorrow and I could recap the whole season. But no, also, I can't watch week, week to week though. I can't do that for The Bachelor. 
no, it's insufferable. Like, I won't go back there. I don't care if it's like keeping up with The Bachelor was some of the worst years of my life. Like, I will, you cannot you won't make go me go back there. I don't no, care if it's the best shit on the planet. Now I'm at a place where I'll see like headlines about two people from like Bachelor in Paradise. I think they just got engaged. And like, I don't know the name, never heard the yeah. name before, never saw this person. Like, I'm so out where I feel like for a while it was still like residual people yes but now I've cycled through and these all are new but I do think like if you are a bachelor watcher like this was a good season yeah I think so too because I saw people talking about it and I haven't seen people talking about it in probably two three years and also even that story made headlines where he said that it had Joey an old school vibe. no and he was funny and cute like and dumb like I liked it Malta had an old school vibe Malta does have an old school vibe, and I feel that, Joey. I do. Yeah, and so now their next leading lady, I think people are really excited about. She looks Fabulous. adorable. Fabulous. Fabulous. I hope that they're having a renaissance over there. I just think it's funny. The Bachelor, like, it's 2020, whatever, like, is still having their first this, first that. Like, they are so behind, and they're catching up. And, oh, you know what? I was actually thinking about the other day. The way that we got like a quiet on set, I feel like we need something about like Bachelor Nation at its height. The I think we need like the rise and fall of Bachelor Nation, including like Mike Fleiss, the Chris Harrison thing. Like we need a comp. Like what the fuck happened? How do you go from being literally like the biggest phenomenon in pop culture, like literally setting the tone, every celebrity watching your show, millions, like literally even a bad season had like seven million viewers, and this was post the cable peak, like. What the fuck? Like, I need an explanation on what happened. In documentary format. I wonder what it was. Like, a lot of people blame the Chris Harrison drama, but I feel like it was over before that. Yeah, like, when was it over for you? Claire Crawley. I think that this is when it's over for me. But I watched Matt James' season. Was that after? Yeah. I watched too. And then who was after Matt James? I feel like it was Claire after. No, because Matt was on Claire's season, no? Hold on. Who? Yeah. List of Bachelorette. Who? Clayton. Clayton. We definitely didn't watch that, but I feel like there was someone before that. Who came after Matt James? Who was the girl? Bachelorette. Oh, they had the two. Okay, Claudia. It was like Michelle. Oh, Young Gabby. And um. Oh yeah. And no, that girl, Claudia. What's her name? The pilot. No, no, no. That were after after Gabby and Rachel. No, but for Matt James' this season, Claudia, Katie, with the dildo. Yeah. So I think I I might have finished Matt James' season and left it at and that. And then I didn't watch Kate after Kate. It was Katie and then Michelle, and I didn't watch Katie. Yeah. Did you watch Michelle? No. So then I stopped. That yeah, was the yeah, last yeah. I watched. So yeah. if I had to blame someone, pers- like for me. It would be Katie. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, that would, to me, would be an enticing documentary. I also feel like there was a lot that went on behind the scenes. And I think a lot of the leads have their NDAs have run out. And I think a lot of them would, if they're no longer involved in the franchise, I feel like a lot of them had weird things with Mike Fleiss. Like, I want to hear. Yes, I agree with you. It's ripe for nefarious behavior, but I also yeah. feel like a lot of the bachelor people, especially former bachelor people who don't have NDAs, like they have platforms and they have podcasts and if they had a story that they wanted to tell, they're they're in the business of storytelling and they would have. Perhaps. Perhaps. So I don't know how much there there is that we don't actually already know. I feel like we know a lot. We do. I feel like it is what you think it is. Like the show yeah. Unreal. Exactly. Even the, when Unreal came out, it was so, it made The Bachelor look so bad. The Bachelor was so big, it couldn't be taken down. Like, how do you go from that to being the most relevant show? And it was made by former Bachelor producers. So you knew they were like harping on real experiences. Yeah. So that was today's Fast Five. I had such a blast. I love when the stories give. I just don't think we could call it the Fast Five. The fastidious. What does that mean? Uh, like stalwart? I feel like that works. The stalwart five. Love. Even though that's like not what we were trying to say, but that's a good word. Fastidious. Very attentive to and concerned about accuracy and detail. I would That's say us. the fastidious five. And then what's stalwart? Loyal, reliable, and hardworking. Work- That's also good. Too. Also applies. 
the fastidious stalwart five. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast of Monday Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to do every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So you're watching us on YouTube. Please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, Radio, Castbox, all the places where we listen to podcasts. Mind out so toast. Leave a five-star review about a beautiful sign again. <gasps> Wickedly talented we are. I hope you guys have an amazing Tuesday. And we'll see you on, yeah, that's right, tomorrow. We're, like, we're halfway there tomorrow. That's exciting. It is exciting. And, and it's excited, excitement excites me. And it's lunch. Goodbye. Love ya. Bye.